solve this problem, but we're unsuccessful. Okay. There was no known way to get a planet of our level of awareness through the changes that were coming. You must have been good at reading book reports in, in grade school. So when this had happened in the past, it meant that the planet was destroyed. The Syrians kept on looking, however, and eventually they discovered that someone in a faraway galaxy had conceived of an idea that might work. Are you serious? But had never, <laughs> never tried. Todd, are you so serious? We were not certain that we were not going to make it. Consciousness can and does make a quantum leap. Leaps all the time. And does make quantum leaps all the time. Hey Todd, are you serious? Are you serious? Huh? Or are you Pleiades? What? Are you serious or are you Pleiades? <laughs> are you serious? Uh, but the Syrians were assuming the worst. So they went ahead and prepared everything necessary to implement the idea of experiment that they had come upon. They created a living vehicle that was 50 miles long. Okay. Cigar shaped, black, and seamless with both carbon and silicon life forms. Are we talking about and UFOs? One. The whole thing was a self aware living unit, like a big bird. Are we talking about like UFOs? Jerry Schreiner is talking about. It had a transparent area on one end and was manned by about. 300 to 350 men and women of the Syrian race from the third planet. They were um, uniform gold emblems. A light ship? Or <laughs> no, it was like a black church ship. A flying church? Black bird. Oh. Anyway, dedicating as much time to this project as was necessary. <laughs> flying church. They also made eight <laughs> little flying saucer type vehicles or ships that were unmanned. These were approximately 12 to 20 feet in length. The Syrians assembled them all together and worked out all its possibilities, then set it aside and waited. <laughs> Meanwhile, back on Earth, <laughs> in okay. early 1972, oh, okay. Gunvalo, Gunvalo, you know Gunvalo, was directed to Canada as soon as he got here. He had to make a secret connection with a man named David Suzuki. Oh yeah, the alien bases were going pretty strong in the 70s. Suzuki is a very highly disciplined person who works on many different levels. Yeah. He studied planets not by looking through a microscope, but by looking through a telescope. Ah. In the principle ah. as above, so below. If you're looking at really big things, you can see all functions more clearly. He watched the movements of asteroids and applied that to his understanding of genetics. Suzuki was also interested in the activity of our sun and had a team of people watching it all the time. Watching the sun? Yeah, one day... In 1950, researchers had witnessed a phenomenon that was an unknown in human experience. Uh-oh. A spiraling light came off the sun and went rapidly right past the Earth. Oh, my God. They had no idea what this was, but it was an indication of something unusual occurring. In the 50s, huh? As the Earth rotates on its axis, the axis itself wobbles, creating its level cycles. A slow 25,920-year precision. Ah, sounds like morning news to me. <laughs> that is the inclination itself oscillating back and forth, which takes about 46,000 <laughs> years. 8.43 p.m., time to get the day started. <laughs> There are also other wobbles. One in particular takes 14 years. According to Suzuki, we were on the furthermost point of this wobble in 1950. When the spiral went flying past the Earth, the area subtended by the wobble began to widen, the equivalent of a top slowing down. Uh -oh. It took researchers 14 years of study before concluding that this change in the wobble would lead to a shifting of the poles, giving Earth a new north and south pole. Did you say, hey! By 1964, they are pretty certain of this. Anyway. Did 
we get that shift yet or not? The new team study will get it out for four more years before they act it. Okay. Not good at all. <laughs> 